Well, it turns out that Twitter, the free speech beacon of the planet, according to Elon Musk and his fanboys, just experienced another purge of not only journalists, but conspicuously Elon Musk critics as well. Harvard Law's Alejandro Caraballo noticed it this morning, writing there was a massive purge of journalists on Twitter. Steven Zetti of the Texas Observer and Ken Klippenstein of The Intercept. In addition, blogger Rob Rousseau and podcast True Anon Pod. She adds, they also got Z Squirrel and Liam Neeson, both shitposting accounts that were critical of Elon and Bill Ackman. Now, when it comes to Z Squirrel, they said they weren't given a reason for the suspension, but suspects that their criticism of Bill Ackman may be wise since he's friends with Elon Musk, and when it comes to another account, the Liam Neeson named Sissy SpaceX, they responded to Elon Musk promoting the white supremacist great replacement theory again, writing, get a load of goddamn apartheid Clyde over here, which is hilarious. Now, I just want to pause for a moment to point out that Sissy SpaceX and Apartheid Clyde were both temporarily trending on Twitter after Elon Musk banned this account, which is hilarious because this would not happened had he not banned them. But there's this Streisand effect that he never seems to learn about every single time this happens. But regardless, Apartheid Clyde is the perfect name for Elon Musk. Now, the good news is that all of these accounts were actually restored fairly quickly, but the reason the reason why they were restored is, we'll call it interesting. Carabayo writes, I didn't know this could get worse, but it did. Elon reinstated all the accounts because Jackson Hinkle, an anti-Semitic white supremacist, asked him about it. And Musk responded saying, I will investigate. Obviously, it is okay to be critical of anything, but it is not okay to call for extreme violence as that is illegal. Now, these accounts didn't do that, so he's just talking out of his ass. And he also told George Galloway that he'd look into it and told Glenn Greenwald, quote, we do sweep for spam slash scam accounts and sometimes real accounts get caught up in them. I'm sure. While I'm thankful that these accounts were reinstated, I'm not buying his excuse. There have been other accounts like Juniper, for example, that happened to be critical of Elon Musk and they were also inexplicably banned. You're not going to convince me that this was an accident or part of a spam sweep. It's clear Elon Musk is a thin-skinned narcissist with an axe to grind, and it's not the first time that his pettiness has dictated policy on Twitter. Maybe I would be a little bit more charitable if this were the first time that this happened, but... He spent the last year chumming it up with far-right fascist accounts exclusively and has at times gone after leftist accounts when fascists told him those are the ones that he should be targeting. We've, didn't, we've done videos about this, so I refuse to believe that this wasn't deliberate. Now, when he came back, Ken Klippenstein pointed this out. Quote, this was the last time I reported on Elon Musk before my ban about his little-noticed meeting with Netanyahu to discuss the security aspects of artificial intelligence. Steve Monticelli responded to Elon Musk saying, show me the Twitter files on this one because I highly doubt that it's a coincidence a number of high-profile journalists were suspended all at once. Exactly. And Rob Rousseau simply responds saying, well, that was exciting. I bet. Now, ironically, as multiple accounts critical of Elon Musk got purged, two people who are never critical of Elon Musk, dare I say they're Elon Musk dick riders to an extent, they actually commended him for his commitment to free speech while these journalists and shit posters were purged. Why? Well, because they announced that they have new shows that they'll be posting on Twitter. Former CNN host Don Lemon announced his new show, and it's going to be airing first on Twitter, which he calls, quote, the biggest space for free speech in the world. Very, very interesting time to post this. Now, shameless right-wing grifter Tulsi Gabbard took her praise for Musk to an even further level, announcing her new show, writing, freedom of speech is a fundamental right in America. Sadly, we live in a time where debate, dialogue, and dissent can be cause for cancellation and censorship by those in power. To defend free speech, we must use it. I'm announcing a new partnership today with Twitter, where under Elon Musk's leadership, free speech is not only protected, it is celebrated. And again, I have to point this out because it is so absurd that I can't let it be lost on us. She's saying all of this about free speech and how Elon Musk is a leader as multiple accounts critical of Elon Musk were purged, and he did not bring them back until people pointed out that there was this discrepancy. These accounts are all of a sudden gone. This is weird. Many of them are journalists, journalists who have been critical of Elon Musk, and a lot of them are shit posters. also coincidentally critical of Elon Musk.
Now, the reason why they don't view themselves as hypocrites is because when Tulsi Gabbard, for example, says free speech, she doesn't mean free speech in the general sense. She means free speech exclusively for fascists because she never has anything to say about bans on books, bans on BDS, but she has so many talking points about how woke ideologues and woke indoctrination is the real threat to free speech but actual free speech violations mm, tulsi gabbard doesn't care and that's because she's a grifter who doesn't actually have any core political beliefs she's just saying what she believes is going to get her a platform and it's funny because despite being a former member of congress and presidential candidate and fox news contributor she can barely survive on youtube so she has to post on twitter where the billionaire owner of that platform is going to try to shove her content down our throats since she couldn't grow our organically. Meritocracy is a myth, my friends. But I do want to get back to Elon Musk, because aside from the usual hypocrisy that we can expect from him when it comes to free speech, you know, it is genuinely dangerous to see him use this platform to push white supremacy at the top of his lungs. We already saw one tweet where he pushed the Great Replacement conspiracy theory, but that wasn't an outlier. He does this all the time. He just did it yesterday as well, saying Democrats are importing voters, and he's been tweeting nonstop about immigration, which is interesting for the fact that he is literally literally an immigrant himself. He was not born in the United States. He is a South African who moved here. But after moving to America, he wants to close the door to everyone else behind him. It's so disgusting and disgraceful, but I want to dive into this just a little bit. Because when he talks about immigration, he is specifically against Latin American immigration. And this is so infuriating to me to see Americans who live on stolen land complain about people moving here from Latin America after our failed policies destroyed their countries and destabilized their countries. But when it comes to Elon Musk, it's interesting because he is fear-mongering about the threat that immigration poses while simultaneously fear-mongering about declining birth rates. So he's previously warned about a big reckoning coming due to low birth rates and has vocalized concern about people not having kids and even voiced fears about the global population not being big enough. Now, the global population is larger than it's ever been despite resources being limited, despite climate change and the threat that that poses. But capitalists like Elon Musk tend to concern troll about declining birth rates, especially in developed countries, because that to them is viewed as an economic issue. If the population in a particular country isn't always exponentially growing, then endless economic growth isn't a possibility. Profits will also not be able to grow exponentially. They'll eventually fall, and that's a threat to their wealth. Now, there's multiple ways in theory to address this if you actually see that as a problem, which I do not. I think we have to take care of the people that we have right now on this planet and not encourage people to have more children. But that's just like a personal decision. It's it's not a big problem. Like we're doing just fine. But the most obvious way that you can address this if you care about it is through immigration. If citizens aren't having kids, you supplement population growth with immigration. But yet, Elon Musk is strongly against immigration, especially from Latin America. Ask yourself why that is. Excuse me, why that is. He wants the white kind of population growth. Excuse me, the right kind of population growth. I keep misspeaking. Are you picking up what I'm putting down? He doesn't want brown people to move to this country. Period. Full stop. He wants the population growth to be exponential, but white population growth. So that way there's a higher proportion of white people than there is brown people here. This is what he's hinting at. If you look at all of his tweets and you put them all together and you step back, you see all of the pieces of the puzzle together and he's sending a very clear message. And one of his defenders might say that I'm being uncharitable here, and he's not worried about the decline of white birth rates in particular. He's never said that, which is true. But this is more about improving economic conditions for everyone. And bigger populations means a bigger economy, which is good for all of us, especially for him, because it means more profits in theory. But he doesn't actually give a shit about improving conditions and a bigger economy for everyone else. And I say this because he has gone on a warpath against the one government agency that has been effective at protecting workers that he wants to exploit, the NLRB. As More Perfect Union points out, Elon Musk wants the NLRB declared unconstitutional. NLRB prosecutors issued a complaint against SpaceX for illegally firing eight employees who criticized Elon Musk. Hmm, I'm sensing a 
pattern here. So Musk and his SpaceX lawyers called the labor board the very definition of tyranny. Now, as Timothy Noah of the New Republic points out, he might actually get what he wants here if his goal is to have the NLRB declared unconstitutional, because Noah explains SpaceX this week filed the lawsuit arguing that the NLRB, which Congress created before Musk's parents were born, ought not to exist. Not content to run Twitter into the ground, Musk now wants to repeal the New Deal. Naturally, that would be catastrophic, but this isn't one of Musk's nuttier crusades. He's got a lot of allies sitting on the Supreme Court. Musk's SpaceX lawsuit argues that the NLRB is, quote, an unconstitutionally structured agency because its administrative law judges, or ALJs, can't be fired by the president because the NLRB performs both prosecutorial and judicial functions, thereby violating separation of powers, and because the NLRB's board members, though appointed by the president, can be fired only for cause. His lawsuit also suggests that Congress can't delegate judicial functions to an independent agency, an ancient argument the Supreme Court set aside when it reconciled itself in the late 1930s to the New Deal's alphabet agencies. Now, Noah explains that Musk could actually pull this off. He could get the NLRB off his back by shutting it down entirely. And the arguments that he's making against the agency are right in line with the legal arguments that conservatives like Steve Bannon have made. Like when you hear people like Steve Bannon talk about the administrative state being dismantled, he uses this same line of logic that Elon Musk's lawyers are using in court against the NLRB. Now, we're just getting a small snapshot of Noah's article overall, but the TLDR version is that Musk could do this. Like, just stop for a moment and think about how horrifying this is. A billionaire who doesn't want to be held accountable for worker violations could just get that agency shut down entirely. Now, we don't know yet, but the fact that it's even a possibility should worry all of us. So, I mean, if you're under this delusion that Musk cares about improving economic conditions, his union busting and attack on worker rights and the NLRB say otherwise. So we're in this situation where we have watched the world's richest man become radicalized in real time, and he's using his position of power to silence critics and shape political discourse to his liking. And this right here is why leftists say that billionaires should not exist, because exploitation and greed aren't the only issues that I have with that level of wealth. In a capitalist system, wealth translates directly into power. And if you have enough wealth, you can directly impact our democracy and institutions in a profound way. And Elon Musk is demonstrating that to us in real time. And none of us have the ability to vote Musk out of power. Right. We can't say you don't get to control Twitter any longer because he's not an elected official. Should we, so he has all of this wealth and none of the accountability that comes with that power. We just have to cross our fingers and hope for the best. That's that's the level of recourse afforded to us by this system. Tyrannical billionaires can do what they want and we have no say. But. Keep in mind that there are more of us than there are of them, and this perverted system of exploitation and grotesque wealth only exists so long as we allow it to. So it's a gross system, it's despicable, but just because we have to fear censorship or repercussions doesn't mean that we shouldn't speak out against Elon Musk. We should speak out louder than ever because what he's doing on Twitter, what he's pushing for, is harmful. Woke mom. Woke ideology. Woke ideology. Woke ideology. Woke ideology. Woke ideology. Woke test. Woke ideology. Woke Olympics. Woke ideology. 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 Wo